Here at the Rogue Children's Gallery, the author's amazing characters are brought vividly to life. But how can schools work with stimulating environments like this to make the most of the learning opportunities they offer? Tannerswood Primary School near Watford has a long-established relationship with the gallery. We've been using Roald Dahl as one of our um, guided reading writers. So um, every day there's a different guided reading group that will work with me on activities relating to a book. The children decided at the beginning of the year that we would use George's Marvellous Medicine as our class book this year, um, or this term. So we've been reading that at the end of each day. It's become a bit of a tradition in the school to go to the Roald Dahl Gallery because uh, we've been doing it for all the years that I've been in the school and for several before. Uh, we work on a two-year cycle, um, so every two years we visit the Roald Dahl Gallery and the children almost expect to go. The gallery is housed on two floors. The Discovery Gallery downstairs is based on five classic Roald Dahl stories. In the Imagination Gallery, children can experiment with shadows, reflections, light and sound. When we were developing uh, ideas for the gallery, um, we had three main objectives in mind. One was to make our collections more accessible to a younger audience. Uh, two was to offer hands-on learning experiences for visitors. And the third one, and the most important one, was to try and celebrate the spirit of Roald Dahl. Now this gave us a, a marvellous opportunity to sort of use our imagination, use uh, wordplay, use humour to try and interpret the collections. What we've done is we've used Roald Dahl's characters and stories as a way in for children to learn about our collections. What story had loads of glass bottles in it? Um, magic. Magic. It's something magical, yes? Um, dreams? Dreams, that's right. Workshop visits to the gallery tend to last around 90 minutes and schools can plan them with the gallery beforehand to focus on specific curriculum areas such as literacy or history. He's aged about 70 in this photograph and he's standing in the garden in his apple orchard of his house called Gypsy House. Now there's a little path and it's leading to this building here. What do you think he used to do in that building? Yes. Write story? He did. It was his writing hut. Now, Roald Dahl said you don't need anything special to write a good story. You need something to write with, like a pen or a pencil, something to write on, a piece of paper. But the most important oh. thing he said comes from inside your head. What do you think he meant? His imagination. Good boy, imagination, that's right. We've been doing lots of work on character portraits. That's big in the National Literacy Strategy this term. So that's one of the things that we have to work in. So work on. So in that respect, it links in very well. Um, also, we've been working on tenses, uh, verb tenses. And again, you can use any fiction book to actually work on tenses and um, describing words. Some of the descriptions that Roald Dahl uses in his books are absolutely fantastic. Um, and the children have been using those descriptions to actually draw pictures of characters and try to visualise the characters themselves. Just outside... Mostly I wanted them to have some fun. Roald Dahl's characters just come alive um, at the gallery. When you're reading a book, you have to imagine a lot of the things that you're seeing and the pictures that Quentin Blake draws and are all over the gallery just bring it alive. Um, and the artefacts as well just, just make it very exciting. When we were developing uh, ideas for the gallery, um, we wanted to sort of tackle the gallery, uh, the uh, curriculum from a different sort of angle. So um, what we did, we actually started with Roald Dahl's books. We looked through his stories, we tried to identify themes in his stories that we could link in with the national curriculum. During the session, children get the opportunity to explore and experiment with the exhibits, starting in the Discovery Gallery. Here, for instance, they're able to study creepy crawlies under a microscope. The gallery is very multi-sensory. There are things to touch, there are colours and lights and sound and so forth. Um, you can be very, very active in the gallery. Novels are a great cross-curricular resource um, if you think from the beginning about how you might tie it into the rest of your teaching. 
So I think it's a real stimulus to creative imagination, it's a stimulus to discussion and thinking skills, and it also um, makes the children engage with the book in a very different sort of way. Boys and girls, ladies, this is our morning production of Augustus Gloop, that greedy boy. I think that probably they're going to have a lot more fun than they do perhaps in a normal day in the classroom. It also can give opportunities for children who perhaps might not get picked for role play in the classroom, um, that they might be picked for something here and it often surprises the teacher, oh I never thought so and so would be up for doing something like that. So out of a classroom setting they can see other sides to the, their pupils' personalities. They let me out! <laughs> One, two, three... <laughs> Give them a clap. Take your bows. We've been acting out Charlie in the Chocolate Factory when Augustus Gloop was um, falling in the... Um, chocolate river and coming up in the bubbles. I think um, the staff at the gallery, the way that they actually talk about Roald Dahl and about the characters in the stories, that they are very theatrical in their presentation and I think that really makes the children sit up and listen. Um, and I noticed that there wasn't any talking amongst any of the children whilst the gallery staff were talking themselves. Um, and the children were keen to actually answer questions and put their hands up. So, for us, it's, a, it's quite refreshing. In the Imagination Gallery, um, the, so, the, the themes have sort of evolved around the central uh, exhibit, which is the Twits, and you can see the Twits upside down room, which is very much, well, how we see the world. We see the world uh, through our eyes. Our eyes see things upside down and then our brain turns the image the right way round. So upstairs there are lots of things to do with optical illusions, light and colour, mirrors and, and reflections. Because in Dahl's world, things weren't always as they first appear. Um, you can't always believe your eyes. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Step away from the wall, open your eyes. <laughs> It looks like you're all jumping up in the air, doesn't it? I enjoyed the most of the gallery. It's uh, um, the room up there, um, the the imagination one. Why did you like that one the most? Because you get to do like feel the twit speed and do stuff with them. What's going to happen now is I'm going to put you on our television. Would you like that? Yes. Right. We need to say three words for this to happen, though. The words are lights, camera, action. So all together, light, light camera, camera, action. action. Well, you're on TV. Give yourselves a wave. <laughs> say hello, me. Hello, me. OK. Could I have the three girls in the middle standing up? You might be in for a bit of a shock, girls, because you see, you're so tiny now, I can hold all three of you in my hand. I know it does come as a shock when this happens to children. I can pat you on the head. <laughs> and you. And you. Can you give me your name when I pat you on the head? Melody. Georgia. The visit ends with a ride in the great glass elevator. I think they would know a lot more about Roald Dahl and his his life and his stories than perhaps they did when they first arrived. Um, I hope it would make them feel very keen to read more of his stories. I think it's a wonderful experience and I think it leaves a lasting impression as well on the children who visit here. Back at school, the class reflects on the visit. So you can talk to the people around you about the best parts of the trip, and your favourite parts of the trip and share our ideas my favourite part was when I went through Mr Fox's tunnel. 
I think it's absolutely imperative to actually do follow-up work because otherwise there's no benefit to actually going if you're just going to slot it in to be one day out where you do something and then you come back and you don't do anything at all about it. So uh, it makes the children appreciate the visit and talk about it uh, for the rest of the term, really. As follow-up work, the class used the visit in a range of curriculum areas, beginning with numeracy and DT. We're going to have a go today at coming up with our own medicine. All right, so let's have a little look. We're going to make two litres of medicine using these ingredients up This here. morning they were so designing their own marvellous medicine in partners, uh, trying to use a uh, quarter litres, half a litres to make a two litre bottle of medicine. Flower of turnips perfume. They had to uh, cascade ideas for gruesome ingredients that were all liquids as opposed to some of the solids that George put into his own medicine and then they had to um, decide which quantities of which of the ingredients they would use to make a two litre bottle of medicine. water, raw eggs, lion slobber, out-of-date milk, human blood, green paint, poisonous berries and tur turquoise hair dye. Having created recipes for their own marvellous medicines, their next task is to design the bottles using the original text as inspiration. Um, as George started to go around the house and gather the ingredients for his medicine, so let's just have a little read of that. OK, so give me a bug and a jumping flea. Give me two snails and a lizard's three and a slimy squiggler from the sea and the poisonous sting of a bumblebee. And this afternoon, you've got to start thinking about each of those ingredients and thinking about what they look like, what they smell like, what they sound like, what they feel like. In terms of designing their posters this afternoon, that just seemed a natural follow-up to the maths work that we've done this morning. They start by using a herringbone diagram to help create descriptions for their medicine bottles. What we saw in the Royal Doll Gallery is books being brought to life. Now, I think that's something that you can do in any classroom, because if you look at the activities the children were doing in the Royal Doll Gallery, they're all activities which you could translate into any classroom and with any book. So, for instance, the business of, of actually trying to illustrate the book, of actually looking at the story and then trying to create it for yourself, either by building models or by doing drawings. If you are advertising a medicine, you need to think about the shape and design of your bottle. We're trying to make and um, design our own pot of, um, of a medicine. With the art, we had fun. It doesn't link to our current scheme of work, uh, but I am told by my colleagues and by the head and the deputy head that the national curriculum is a guideline and, you know, if the children need it, you can deviate from it. Well, I have visited galleries myself with my own children and I, I think they only really come alive when you go as a school because the gallery staff are there for you um, and they do entertain the children. When, whereas as a parent, when you go along to a gallery, you are doing it all. Um, so I think as a school, it's invaluable to go.